Hello! This is going to be a guide on how to play Stamina Warden. I will put timestamps for the different sections down below, uh, so that you can zip zop in between those if you want. Uh, otherwise, I will go over them in uh, chronological order, and uh, yeah, let's go! Alright, so let's take a look at our skills. Starting off with the Animal Companion skill tree. We're going to want Dive, it's going to be your first ability, so we spec that into Cutting Dive to make it a stamina ability. We want Scorch, and we want to morph it into Subterranean Assault. I'll explain more about these abilities later when we go over the rotation. We want Betty Netch, and we want to morph it to Bull Netch. And we want Falcon Swiftness, and we want to morph that into Bird of Prey. As goes for the passives, we want all of them. Uh, Bond of Nature gives some passive healing. Savage Beast makes it so that when we cast an ability we gain some ultimate. Really good. And Flourish increases our regen, which is also very good. And Advanced Species, which is a passive increase to our damage. And we want that, of course. So all the passives in the Animal Companion skill tree, moving on to Green Balance. In this skill tree, we're going to want to pick up Fungal Growth, and we're going to want to morph it into Soothing Spores to make it a Stamina ability. After that, we want to pick up gr uh, Lotus Flower, and we want to morph it into Green Lotus. And then, last but not least, we want the Maturation skill. Uh, or the passive, rather. Uh, and we want to put both uh, both of our slots into those, so fully spec it out. Uh, which is going to make it so that whenever we heal ourselves or an ally, we're going to buff them with minor toughness increasing there and our max HP by 10% for 10 seconds, uh, for 20 seconds, do you think? Uh, which is very, very strong. And since this is going to be a beginner-focused guide, we're going to skip Winter's Embrace. Um, there are some passives in here you can pick up as you go on, but I'll skip those for now, so Animal Companions and Green Balance. Moving on to our weapon, since we're only using one weapon, we won't have to waste too many skill points here. Uh, so in the bow skill tree, we want to pick up Volley and morph it into Endless Hail. And then we want Arrow Spray, and we want to morph it into Acid Spray. And then we want Poison Arrow, and we want to morph that into Poison Injection. As for the passives here, uh, we want all of them, since we're always going to be using a bow, so we'll get full benefit of all these passives at all times. So we want long shots, increasing our damage done with bow abilities, depending on how far away we are from the target. Uh, accuracy, free crit, free crit chance for wearing a bow. Um, we're going to be doing that all the time. Uh, Ranger, cheaper abilities. Hawkeye, this is a really important one makes it so that every time you light attack within a 5 second window, you get a stacking buff that can potentially increase your damage all the way up to 25% with bow abilities. It's very, very strong. And a hasty retreat. It gives us major expedition for 2 seconds after we roll dodge. It turns into 4 seconds when we put both, uh, both skill points in there. And that's going to make us really fast whenever we dodge roll. So if we dodge roll out of something dangerous, we're going to be out of there really quick. So this is a great talent to pick up. And after that, we're moving on into our armor skill tree. And since we'll be a stamina DPS, we're going to want medium armor. Dexterity, obviously. Crit chance. Great skill. Uh, Windwalker. Really good. Increases our stamina recovery and reduces the cost of our abilities. Uh, really good sustain here. Uh, improved sneak, not necessary. If you like to do sneaky stuff, then pick it up because it makes it pretty much cheap to really cheap to sneak. Um, but it's not mandatory for. Uh, it doesn't affect damage in any way, so we can skip it for now. Uh, agility uh, increases our weapon damage. Very very strong. And Athletics increases the movement speed bonus of Sprint, really good, and reduces the cost of Roll Dodge, really, really good, for when we need to avoid stuff. And we'll be wearing 7 pieces of medium armor, so we don't need to go into light armor or heavy armor. In the world skill tree, we don't need anything. In the guild skill tree, we're going to skip this for now, 
because we uh, I'm going to be assuming that you haven't leveled up your guild uh, skills. Um, and you're not going to need alliance war, so no PvP needed. And racial. Here you want to pick up all of your racial passives. Uh, I meant orc to get the bonus stamina, which is really strong for stamina DPS. Uh, unflinching rage, which gives us a passive heal. And some passive max health, which is really strong as well. Uh, and this makes it so that every 4 seconds we will heal ourselves for 600 by using a weapon ability. And that is great. It's a free heal. And then Swift Warrior. This is my favorite passive. It increases our weapon damage by 258, which is really strong. Uh, orcs are actually the strongest stamina DPS class right now. Uh, or race, rather. Um, but the most fun part of this is, is it reduces the cost of sprint by 12% and increases the movement speed bonus of sprint by 10%. So it makes us super fast. Uh, after this, we want to go into our crafting skill tree, and we want to pick up alchemy. And in the alchemy skill line, pick up medicinal use. It makes it so that potions last 30% longer. This is going to give us longer uptime on uh, uh, dropped potions, like the ones you find, the essence of stamina that you find all over the world from mobs, chests, wherever. But if you have a crafted potion, it's going to allow you to have 100% uptime on that buff. So when you move on to uh, use stronger potions or when you get some more money and you want to invest into that, um, this is going to be really, really strong. Uh, so that's it for our skills. Actually, it's not. We also want to pick up the Feral Guardian, our friendly bear friend, of course. And we want to morph it into Wild Guardian. There we go. That's it. Alright, moving on to champion points. I am going to be assuming that we are a freshly dinged 160 CP character. Uh, so I'm going to show you what I would put into our uh, champion point trees. Uh, this Do not take this as gospel in any way or form. This is just what I use. There might be a lot better ones. Uh, so just... Uh, Allocate them freely and see what works for you. I like to keep uh, Mighty at 5%, so 19 points into Mighty, and then the rest into Piercing. And we have 53 points to spend in this tree, as we are uh, CP 160. Moving into the red tree, I'll put 53 into Ironclad. Uh, I'll, I stack this up to 72 to get a nice even number, because whenever you allocate these, um, the decimals after the, the full numbers, they don't apply. So this says 19.47, but I actually only get 19%. Um, so, But since I want to keep building into this, I don't care about that for now. And then moving on to the green skill tree, we are going into Mooncalf, and we put 53 into there as well. Um, and we'll keep building this until we reach 75, so we don't care about the decimals here. Um, and then we uh, are done for our CPs. Alright, now let's go over our gear. We are only using easily obtainable gear, and I'm going to be beginner friendly in the way that we will not be wearing a monster helm set, since... Uh, this is going to be focused on what we're going to be doing before we enter Veteran Dungeons. So on the body, we are using Hunding's Rage. We're wearing 7 out of 5 pieces, just because I didn't have anything else to fill out this slot. Uh, if you have some other set, just use any other stamina set uh, to get the 2-piece bonus um, from that. Um, to get some extra juice, but uh, I didn't have time to do that, so... I'm just going to use 7 pieces of Hunting's Rage on the body, and then we go for... Oh, actually, uh, Hunting's Rage is a crafted set from the base game. Um, if you can't make it yourself, it requires 6 traits to craft, uh, 6 traits research to craft, and um, it takes quite a while, but uh, most people who have played the game for a while, they can craft this, and uh, they will do so for... Uh, some do it for free, and some do it for a very, very minor fee. Uh, provided you provide them materials. And uh, so 
ask somebody to craft this for you. Uh, it's a very strong set. Um, and then for our front bar set, we are going to be using Briarheart. This is an uh, Overland set that drops in Rothgar, uh, which is from the Orsinium DLC. But you can also buy this from Guild Traders, so you don't need the Orsinium DLC. Uh, we want three rings with Robust, um, and enchant them with Weapon Damage Glyphs. And then we want a Briarheart Bow. I'm wearing everything blue on the body because um, those are very expensive to upgrade to, uh, to gold. And uh, I was thinking you might not have the money for purple either, but the thing you should spend money on is making your weapon gold. Because that is a very, very... the increase from blue to gold with a weapon is much bigger than the increase from blue to gold on the armor pieces. So I recommend going for weapons first. And on here you want either precise or sharpened. Um, I have gone for precise on this one because it's the bow I use for my endgame build um, sometimes. And so as you get more damage, uh, you get more, uh, you benefit more from crit chance instead of sharpened. But enough of that. So precise bow or sharpened. And then on the back bar you want any other bow. Uh, I use Hunting's Rage now because it's I can craft it and uh, I had it on hand. So on the back bar you want it to be infused with a weapon damage glyph uh, because and uh, because we cast Endless Hail, which is a uh, damage over time on the back bar. This is going to make it so that the weapon damage glyph stays up, uh, it stays active uh, indefinitely. So we have almost a 100% uptime on that buff, which is a very very strong buff. And so that is our gear. And um, next up is going to be what buff food we want to wear. Use. So we are going to be eating lava foot soup and salt rice. Um, this gives us almost 5,000 stamina and almost 500 stamina recovery. It's very, very strong. And you might be worried that um, we don't eat any uh, like health food, but the thing is here, um, stamina regen is going to be much more important for us in the beginning. Uh, and it's going to make it so that you uh, can keep the rotation simple. And I find that to be more important than having a lot of health from food. So to make up for the health uh, loss that we have, you can either slot, uh, swap two of these uh, large stamina glyphs on the armor for health glyphs instead or uh, since you're going to be swapping gear a lot and you might not want to waste a bunch of money on glyphs I put 24 um, uh, attribute points into health and 40 into stamina later on when you get proper gear that you're going to be keeping for a while I would go 64 into stamina and make sure that your health is from either food or gear uh, just to uh, maximize your DPS but for now on, in the beginning, we're going to be using 24 health and 40 stamina to make it so that we have uh, almost 15k HP, which is going to be more than enough for veteran non-DLC dungeons, which is what we are going to be focusing on with this build. Now let's go over in which order we are going to cast our spells and what bars we want them on. So on our front bar, we're going to want Subterranean Assault, Cutting Dive, Acid Spray, Bull Netch, Bird of Prey, and Wild Guardian. And on our back bar, we are going to want Endless Hail, Poison Injection, Green Lotus, Soothing Spores, Bird of Prey, and Wild Guardian. The reason we slot Bird of Prey and Wild Guardian on both of our bars is because this gives us a very strong damage buff. You can see there it gives us minor berserk just by being slotted and uh, thanks to this nice passive here advanced species we also get three percent passive increase to our damage from it as well so effectively this is an 11 percent damage increase just by having it on the bar um, which is very very strong and wild guardian we need to keep on both bars because otherwise the bear would despawn whenever we swap bars and we don't want that to happen so we double bar it 
and our rotation is fairly simple. Um, we want to keep using Essence of Stamina potions. Keep these on hand because um, it helps you with sustain a lot. So we want to be starting off with casting our buffs. And our buffs are Bullnetch and Green, Green Lotus. And so we cast Bullnetch, switch to our back bar, we cast Green Lotus, and then we go back to our front bar. Um, this doesn't matter which order you do it, and you just want to keep both buff buffs up at all times. And then we start off with casting Subterranean Assault, this one. This one has uh, a three second delay, so you cast it, and then it takes three seconds for it to actually do the damage. And uh, it applies Major Fracture, which decreases the target's physical resistance, which makes us do more damage to it. And this is very, very good, because the way I've uh, made this, uh, this rotation is so that you're going to get almost 100% uptime on this debuff, uh, and maximizing your damage from Subterranean Assault. It might sound scary at the beginning, but you'll you'll see how easy it is to interweed these. So we start off by casting our buffs, and then we cast Subterranean Assault, and then we Light Attack, and then we switch to our back bar. So Subterranean Assault, Light Attack, switch to our back bar. I will write this rotation down as well, but I thought I should show you, um, because some people are more visual learners and some are better at reading, so... Uh, and now, since we've cast uh, Subterranean Assault and we're back to on our back bar, uh, we want to cast Endless Hail instantly when we switch our back bar. And then we want to Light Attack, cast Poison Injection, Light Attack, cast Green Lotus, and while this animation is going, it's a pretty long animation, you want to swap to your front bar to win some time. So cast it and then switch. Cast it and switch. That saves you almost a second, which is going to increase your DPS a lot. And then when we get back to our front bar, we want a light attack, subterranean assault, and then after that first subterranean assault, we're going to want to use two spells. Um, and that's going to be the bread and butter of this, this uh, rotation. We're going to cast subterranean assault, and then two other spells, and then subterranean assault again, two other spells, and then Subterranean Assault, and we're going to switch back to our back bar. And this makes it so that it perfectly lines up with the time of these two dots, which is very, very nice. So you don't, actually, you don't need any add-on like I have to keep track of the buff timers. You're not going to need that because this rotation is static. Um, you're going to be doing Subterranean Assault, two spells, Sub Assault, two spells, and then Subterranean Assault and switch bars all the time. And so, we will be doing this. Um, I'll show you uh, what front bar rotation is going to look like. So it's going to be light attack, sub assault, light attack, cutting dive, light attack, bear ultimate if it's available, sub assault, light attack, refresh bull niche if you need to, light attack, cutting dive, light attack, sub assault, switch bars. Apply debuffs, light attack, light attack in between, green lotus, switch to your front bar, light attack, sub assault, two spells, sub assault, two spells. Now I needed to re up my uh, bull netch and a bear, bear ultimate was available, so instead of casting two cutting dives, I did those spells in the two spell window. And this is going to save you a lot of damage, like help you get a lot of damage. Uh, because you're still going to keep going with Subterranean Assault, which is your hardest hitting ability. And so you want to cast this, and wh whatever spell is needed in between, uh, if these two need to be, uh, if Bear Ultimate is ready, or if Bullnetch needs reapplying, then that's what you're going to cast. Otherwise, you just do cut two cutting dives. And if you're doing AoE, you just want to cast Sub Assault and two Acid Sprays, and Sub Assault, uh, maintain Bull Netch, Acid Spray, and Sub Assault. So that's, that's the only tricky part about this rotation. 
is what spells you cast in between the sub assault on the front guard. But you'll get the hang of it after after trying it for a while. It's fairly simple to learn. And then we swap to our back bar. End the sail, poison injection, green lotus, light attack, sub assault, light attack, two spells, sub assault. So two cycles of that. Three sub assaults every front bar. Sub assault, two attacks, sub assault, two attacks, sub, -atta uh, sub assault, weapon swap. And that's it. That is going to help you do around 20k damage, even in blue gear with 160 CP. I will uh, be uh, making an update to this if you want. Um, uh, so put in the comment section below if you want me to make an update for the next step of this, for when you have uh, um, some monster helmets and uh, a bit higher level gear and some dungeon gear. And I can show you uh, what you should aim for next. And then ultimately uh, what you should be using to reach what I've been reaching with my DPS is 48,000, um, which I find to be perfectly adequate for all content in the game. I realize most people are going to want to see a example of the build in action, so <laughs> here I will kill a 3 million target dummy um, using the, our blue gear our 160 CP and uh, the rotation that I just taught you. Okay, ready? And let's go. You might see that I'm doing this kind of fast, but that all comes with practice. You're going to be doing it fast as well. The thing is just getting to the rhythm of uh, casting light attacks in between the spells. That is very, very important for damage. Because um, light attack is going to be one of your top damage sources. So make sure that you get one in between. It's a little bit tricky at first, but once you get the, the rhythm and timing of it, it almost becomes like second nature. It becomes like riding a bicycle. get easier or harder depending on your latency. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see I'm playing with 90 uh, MS right now, so, but I'm using mobile internet, so it kind of... Uh, I have an unstable connection, you can see my, uh, uh, my uh, latency is uh, different, like it's not static, so sometimes my, uh, my light attacks don't go off in between the spells, and that obviously is a DPS loss, but it's not too big of a deal. You're still going to be able to do good damage. You can see I've messed up a couple of times because I've been talking. Uh, again, there I messed up. I did three spells in between the spells. Uh, but as you can see, I, it still does. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that I'm doing... Uh, 21, almost 22,000 DPS. Using this very, very simple rotation. And you can see that I've only had to drink one potion. And uh, that is really good because our sustain is so strong. So, And we can obviously use these green potions uh, that are pretty much free because we supply ourselves with both major buffs that we need. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but Green Lotus gives us Major Savagery, which increases our crit chance by 10%. It says 2191 rating, but 209 uh, rating is 1% crit chance, so 2191 is essentially 10%. Uh, and our Bullnetch gives us uh, some stamina region and major brutality, which makes us do our increase our weapon damage by 20%. So, without it, our weapon damage is um, 2755, and with Bullnetch, our weapon damage is 3234. 
And that is obviously going to increase a lot when we have the um, Briarheart buff up and our back bar um, uh, enchant up. And I can show you. So in combat metrics, it's going to show us that, see, light attack is our top damage. Very important to get light attacks in between. Uh, endless hail, sub assault, cutting dive, poison injection, bear ultimate. So this is uh, this is three different damages, but it's swipe that is the bear's auto attack. Crushing swipe is um, when the bear does his um, when he stands up and smashes everything really hard, and he does an AOE attack and he stuns everything. That is crushing swipe, and then guardian savagery is when we press our ultimate button, and it hits really hard. Um, when I'm in my full gear, like full uh, raiding gear, it can hit almost 70,000 damage in one hit. It's stupidly strong. But here we can see that during the fight, our max weapon damage went up to 4,429, which is crazy. And then we are weapon critical at 65 um, because of our green lotus. And critical damage is 50 because we haven't put new CPs into it. That's going to increase a lot when you start putting CPs into... Um, into this one, into uh, precise strikes. Uh, it's going to make our crits do even more damage, which is uh, really strong. And then uh, physical penetration is on a real good ne good level because uh, we, we use the Lover Mundus, uh, which increases our um, spell and physical penetration by a lot. Some people say that the Shadow is the best uh, Mundus stone. That is for end game. When you have really good gear and everything, and you have tanks that debuff the target for you. But when you're doing like solo content and early dungeons, when the tanks might not be as um, experienced, I say use the Lover, because it's going to increase your damage more than the Shadow at the beginning. And then when you get better, move over to the Shadow Mundus. Um, but yeah, that <laughs> that's going to be it, and uh, thank you for watching.